right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, 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 man, oh, man, oh, man. This is the best thing I've ever done, I think. Thank you. Save a man's life. Oh. No. Oh. I'm improving my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start the interview. Okay, okay. Mr. Cody. That was uh, low volume. Can I ask again? It's long, You're doing sound check now. Oh, well, it sounds always okay. Oh, is that the other one? This is JW. Six, always. six, six, five, four, three, two, two, one, action. Mr. Cody, if you could make a documentary on African music, what would it look like? I don't want to make a documentary on African music. No. If you could make one. If I could make one? What do you mean exactly? Well, if you could make... Okay, suppose you're the director of a pop show on Dutch television, and you could make a documentary on African music. What would it look like? 60 minutes of Fela Kuti? <laughs> no. I probably wouldn't talk for myself at all. You see, it's very difficult to answer. Because um, my music is, uh, is, it's not for me to want to project myself as such. Mm -hmm. I do project myself because I do play the music. But what I really want to project is the happenings in the African continent itself. So I've never thought about um, wanting, wanting to write an African music or make a history out of it. No. I've never thought about it. Because my, my main my main preoccupation right now is what is making Africans retrogress. So music is only a very small part of it. Exactly. See. But music is a small part of it. But at the same time, I consider music to be effective, like a weapon to inform people. You see. Okay, like... If I don't play my music now, I wouldn't be sitting here today to talk okay. about the problems of Africa. So my music is like an attraction to inform people, mm -hmm. you see. Yeah. It is the information side of the music that is important. Because uh, I'm not really, I don't really care about history of African music. Other people will write that. I prefer other people to write that. Okay, let's assume you're the man who wants to play music. There has been a few years that you couldn't play music, that you've been in prison, right? Yes. What happened? Why? I was in prison? Yeah. I was in prison simply because of what I talk about Africa. You see, the, the African leaders we have all over Africa today are very preoccupied with their own personal development, personal richness, you know. So it is, it is, uh, it is, they are committing crimes against the African people. And they're not the right persons on And they're not the right place. persons in that place, you see. So it is, uh, Um, but, but let's be concrete. Why were you put in prison? It's not because of okay. just the simple fact that you told the guy upstairs that he's wrong. <laughs> That's the reason. Is it a reason? That's the reason. But what did you say then that was wrong? I said that they are putting us into bondage, they're making us slaves, they follow white man's footsteps too much. They don't want to improve Africa as Africa should be improved. They, sh they are not authentic and they are corrupt. How does Africa have to improve? Africa has to improve by its own methods. You see, every race 
has a reason to be born. Yeah. The white people have a reason to be born in Europe. So when they are born in Europe, they create their own cultures and their own way of life. They have their own God that they worship. In Africa, we had a reason to be born there. So we have a God. We have our gods and we have our mode of worship. You see? But when the African doesn't want to understand or participate in the reason why he was born, then he becomes a failure. Mm -hmm. See, so all the African leaders look up to Europe for progress. Okay, you cannot know a white man's things better than the white man. So but therefore, you cannot intend to progress at the same level with the white man. You see, Africa has not been able to contribute its own knowledge to this universe. But we have knowledge in Africa. You understand? Yeah, of course. You see, so all these things need to be in the education system of, mm -hmm. of the African countries. The fact that Africa must unite as a one government must be in the education system in African countries. But these things never happen. Instead, they come to television, talk English, talk about what is happening in Europe and all this shit, man. They talk sometimes about technological transfer and all this shit, you see? It can never help Africa, you see. We have, to, we have to look in much to ourselves. That's what I'm saying. Is your music kind of a tool? It's a weapon Yeah. to say. It's, 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 a, it's a weapon to say, and it's a weapon to introduce me so I can talk when I have the chance to, like I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. uh, you were in prison? You were in. You were in prison for quite a while. Eighteen months. Yeah, but that's quite a while. That's quite a while, I tell you. It did change your life. Um, it didn't change my life, but it changed my way of thinking. Yeah, in what way? It oh, no, okay, change is not the word, really. It developed my way of thinking. Look, um, I'm very spiritually inclined, and in prison, it gave me a lot of time to meditate and think about what this world is really about. Um, it gives me knowledge about time. You see, if anybody tells me 20 years is a long time, I would tell him no. Because prison has taught me that time is meaningless unless you want to understand what time is about. Because to understand what, is, what time is about, you have to know that there is time for everything. Okay, but there's 24 hours a day, and there's 31 or 30 days in a month, and there's 365 days in a year. That's a lot of spare time to concentrate on music. And when you're in prison, you can't make any music at all. I didn't think about music in prison. Oh, maybe a few times some sounds come to my head, but I don't write them down. I just keep maybe humming some sounds to my head. It was a nice one. Sometimes. What I did in prison was not to play games. I tried not to talk too much. 
try to remain on by myself and I just try to meditate, that's all I did. You see, prison is supposed to get you bored. So when people go in there, they try not to get bored. So I tell myself, okay, you want to get bored, you want to make, you want to make me bored, okay, I'm going to get myself bored so that I will not be afraid to go in next time. So I, I go in there to understand what boredom is about. So it gives me knowledge about patience. Those are the kind of things prisoners taught me. Are you prepared to go back again like in jail? Just, yeah, I'm prepared. That's why I'm talking to you like really? this. Uh, yeah, I'm really prepared. That's why I'm talking to you like this. If I wasn't prepared, I wouldn't be talking to you at all. I would say I don't want any interviews. So this is a uh, well, so-called political statement as well? It is a political statement. And this interview is dangerous for you in Nigeria? It is dangerous for me in Nigeria. Okay, I understand it, but I don't feel it. I understand it, sure, but I, well, I can't feel it. Yeah, that's I don't know what prison is. Yes, you can't feel it because... Uh, you see, the, the European public have been deceived a lot of what is happening in Africa. Mm -hmm. You see, um, because the citizens should really understand really what is happening in Africa. For instance, when they tell me, you see, you have to be there to know. Because the situation in Europe is not the situation in Nigeria, in my country, for instance. You see, you have the European system that you clearly understand and you work out. But we have an alien system that guides our minds, which is the European system. And our minds are African, so there's a total confusion in that country. You can't, everything is so expensive. They have, there's foreign currency for that matter, you know, foreign currency problem for that matter. In some African countries, one unit dollar Mm -hmm. It's 200 units of that country's money, one to 200, and it's ridiculous. That's like in Ghana. But do you hate Europe, or do you hate America? No, I don't. If I hate America or hate Europe, I won't be here. You see, it is... But it's the culture, it's... It is not, it is, it is, Europe, it is European leadership that causes these things. The citizens don't know really what is happening in Africa. Mm -hmm. You see, for instance now, Citizens of Europe should be informed that British taught us democracy. America introduced democracy into Africa. Okay. There can never be a military rule in Britain or America. Never. They will not accept it because in their culture, mm -hmm. they know that the soldier has his place in the society. And everybody understands that. Now they bring the same culture to my people. And the soldiers are now ruling many African countries. And America and Britain makes, does business with these governments. But these governments cannot be legal governments because they are military governments, which they cannot accept in their countries. So that cannot be fair. These are the kind of things we're fighting about. Who's your greatest hero? Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah. Who? Osajefo Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana. And who's that? He was the first president of Ghana. He was the first to talk the way I'm talking about Africa, how Africa can be great. We're actually talking a lot about politics, but I'd like to go back to music again. How would you describe your music? See, but music is a kind of 
see, the way I started to write my music, it's like I was born a colonial boy. I went to colonial school. I went to England to study music and everything. Then something changed me completely to see that I was not playing African music by the time I started, started to work as a profession, as a professional. Now, so I had, to take, I had to take myself back to my culture, started to read, find books to read, started, started to listen to a lot of traditional African music, tried to know the real history of African music. You know, this is my music. Mm -hmm. And after I studied that one and I understood that I was playing music, the music just comes to me. Yeah, a lot of people mentioned you as the number one African who grew into being an African rock star and paving a way for artists such as Salif Keita, Mori Kante, and lots of others. Exactly, that's what it is. That's what it is, I'm still the number one band in Africa. Um, that is true. I made a little sacrifice for that. But that is what I wanted to happen. Because by the time I started to play my music, I was telling the press at that time that African music was going to be the music of the future, even in Europe. Yeah. You see, so I didn't want, I didn't want, want to participate in um, the madness of commercialism. Mm -hmm. I, didn't want to, I didn't want to participate in the madness of gimmicks. I do not want African music to belong to the fashion where music comes and goes. Because where African music goes, it stays. You see, so I don't want to, we don't want to involve ourselves in, com at least I don't want to involve myself in commercialism. So that is what it is about my music. So you can't avoid it, I think. I can't avoid it. No, being a part of... I'm avoiding it. I don't get any, Okay, look at this, okay, on this tour, for instance, I didn't have any tour support. All hotel bills, all, everything is paid from our fees. And I'm here on that tour, hmm. you see. It's a big sacrifice for me, but I have to bring my music for information for people, people to know, because the record companies don't want to support me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, last question, we, and then stop. Okay. We made a few recordings of one of your fellow musicians, such as Maury Kante. What do you think of him? Oh, all musicians playing African music are doing a good work. He's good. And Yusuf Endur? He's fine. Favorite? And what's your favorite African band? The Ghetto oh, Blasters? No, no. They are <laughs> my favorites. <laughs> you see, really, in my own kind of situation, I don't comment on musicians in general. Uh -huh. You see, comment about musicians should come from the listener, not from the artist. That's my philosophy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, goodbye. Thanks. Okay. Let's get down. I'm cold, man.